How you guys doing? This is John Galloway, head lacrosse coach here at Jacksonville University. Our staff is gonna take you through a practice planning meeting today. So we're gonna spend the next 30, 40 minutes with you just doing what we do on a normal basis. So we're gonna essentially plan our first practice when the guys come back this January. Uh, we normally go it by, by themes on each day. So our first practice will be a Monday. We're gonna take you through how we do it from the identity we want the practice to look like, the standards we're gonna have that day, ultimately, all the way to the drills that we're gonna to try to accomplish and then finish up with the announcements that we would give our team leading into the next day of practice. So hopefully we'll give you an insider's look on what it looks like on a daily basis here at the Rock Lacrosse Center at Jacksonville. Okay, let's kick it off here with uh, you know, the identity stuff uh, for the spring. So what are the four or five things here that we wanna to try to you know, emulate throughout the spring practice? Tough, toughness. I think everybody agrees with that one. I mean, are we all kind of in fairness that, you know, I think this is something that we did not have a ton of uh, last spring. Maybe that's an area that we can start to practice a little bit more. And reward guys, um, you know, start to talk more about rewarding guys when they are tough. And I think from our senior meetings, you know, I'm gonna include that with some of our notes here. You know, making sure that those guys know for this year, especially this spring, given the fact that the seniors had their season taken away from them, uh, that that's gonna be a huge piece of what we try to emulate. Um, so, to, to, like, our definition of toughness, uh, running through a ground ball compared to hitting a guy, or is it our willingness to dive on the end line? Is it our you know, I think, to sub? I think the stuff that the seniors mentioned, right, the, the end lines, the ability, the, the B-52 mindset. Um, you know, one thing I thought the seniors said that I thought was pretty cool, I think it was Dixon, the difference between running through a ground ball versus checking a guy who you know just doesn't want to pick it up. Right. You know, that's a moment of toughness. And then how do we, you know, I think that we as a group, and I know we've talked about this, but like end line, right? Like you do that stuff, there's got to be an immediate result, a negative consequence for stuff like that. Does, uh, it, does it make sense to do the identity stuff first and then use the standards to kind of identify all that stuff? So sure. should, we, should we get through that and then kind of bump over the standards on how to emphasize that. That's why we got Minnesota guys around there. We're smartest guys in the room. That's exactly what we should do. All right, let's go. The next um, one then. I think just compete, you know, first day back, just get guys getting after it. Yeah. And again, just going back to like, these are conversations we're having, right? Like the UNC article, I thought was awesome. Like I thought that the guys pulled out the right things from that women's soccer team. Like, can we build off of that? Yeah. Um, the one thing I had written down on my board the other day is like, how do we, like I was thinking the wall ball thing in the beginning of practice, instead of just like, you go and play wall ball, like if Pat and Nick were back there and you partner up and like, all right, for two guys are up 30, you know, one minute, whoever many guys, you know, whoever gets the most amount of reps and maybe you go by position, right? You have a goalie, you have a midi, you have an attackman, like everything kind of builds up in this. Yeah, just, and again, we can talk more about, that's probably gonna be in our practice on the wall ball. But that's a competition that you start the day with. Yeah. You know, I thought that was like something little. I think we can do that by uh, either class or position based on ability to enter the locker room and whatnot, right? That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's kind of like a yeah, beginning of the. Uh... Yeah, is that how we do with the wall ball test too? Like, you know, it's almost like how do we make that more meaningful? I mean, we set in the, in the fall after we did it, we set a goal of like, this is what you should be getting to. So like, they know what that goal is for their position group. So it's like, when we come back and test, like you're not coming in the locker room unless you can hit this many reps on the wall. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the first can compete. I mean, you're kind of within yourself, but even just on a daily basis, like there was one day of practice where every drill we had, we had a score. Now again, it goes back to having an injured guy on the scoreboard or having something on the sidelines. Even if it was like, you know, somebody that had the little flip scoreboard, on the side, you know, like so every day counted towards something. You know, there's been days where we've done that, right? Five points, last year we did that a lot. This drill's a five pointer. And at the end there was a final score. Maybe that's what that is, you know, where green, white's over. Now it's just that, that scoreboard. Hey Pat, this drill's 10 points. And that way at the end of practice there's a result, you know, um, which I think we can add. Does that, like, is that leading us into the next like identity piece of like, the passion and fun. Yeah. Like our guys have fun when they compete. Yeah. Even when it sucks. That's what I noticed this fall. It's like even when it sucks, they like 
Like, you know, I think back to Colin Hinton and Connor Shears running that sprint and how excited the guys were. Like, that's the only time they enjoyed conditioning. So I think that, yeah, how we, how we build these two in, you know, will be really important. And we talked a lot about this one in the, in the, um, in the fall. Uh, so I think that's a good one. I know there's one I'm missing. Well, we, I'm just thinking conditioned and class are two, two, are two others. I think conditioned, right? I mean, we talked about that a lot. The other one I have is discipline too. Right. I don't know if it's under standards or identity, but fundamental, like us harping on the little things early on and not letting them get by with doing things wrong. I think that rolls right into like toughness. Yeah. But yeah, in, in, I mean, in my opinion, you know, I think there are obviously these like subcategories that you can. Yeah. Like them, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the other note class. You know, do you just make that like, this is how we do things, you know? Uh, we're passionate. We play the game with a, a, a certain love, you know, the core value back to passion. I don't want to get away from the core values either. Like this isn't to take away from these. This is more so like reminders for us when we're making practice. So I think that without a doubt, you just add this. You know, you add that part of like, there's a difference between talking shit and like competing, you know, versus being an asshole. Being a guy that's not a, you know, you, you don't want to play against us because we're really conditioned and we're disciplined, not because we're a jerk. Um, and then the final one, I, I think we have to add just for us. And the reason why I put it too is like, going back to that next column, like you run out of the locker room. That's discipline. You turn to the outside. That's, that's discipline. And you're automatically prepared. And you're automatically prepared. And then, you know, just, I would say, that goes in time, hand in hand. And then just to go back to our core values too, like just because I don't want to leave those away, we got passion, right? I think toughness is, is both physical and mental, which is great in resiliency. And ultimately what we're doing is building tradition. Um, I don't know if I would add any more than that, right? Cool, okay, let's, uh, let's switch colors here. Is this Mark or Spaden? It's my role in this whole thing. <laughs> what do we got here for standards? Good run on field, no walking. Yeah, run, run on, run on field when you see it. Dive on contested deadlines. Dive. Uh, something that you know, Coach P and I discussed a little bit, and uh, and, I, and I might be a little bit different, but leaving your helmet on unless you're hurt. If you're on the field, your helmet goes on. Like people aren't coming to the game to see your pretty face. Yeah. Am I, am I, being, am I being a dick there? <laughs> yeah, Steve Keogh used to say that was an opportunity for face time. But I, I agree with you. I, I think that there's a, there's a time and a place, right? Like if, if you're doing something on the sidelines. But I think that if, if, that's, if that's what we decide as part of this, like I would just use this, like what would that fall under? Like if it's in between Discipline? the lines. Yeah. If we're disciplined enough, like when we're in between the lines, our helmet's on and we're buckled up. We're ready to play. And I can't say I did that as a player. Yeah. So helmet's on between the lines. I think it goes right back into the practice. Like you run on the field. In between the lines. You know, you're running on the field. I was very, very pleased when it came up in our senior meeting yesterday about your backup stick is on the field. Yeah. Like the wasted reps, the wasted minutes. The just not coming to not coming prepared. Yeah. It's, that's an extension of you. Yeah. I would say both of these things are discipline prepared. Both of these things are, are either toughness, right? Probably toughness. Maybe conditioning, but I think that this is probably more disciplined, I guess. There was a ton that they said. What are some other ones? The GBs, right? Just tough GBs. I don't even know if we need to put anything else on that. If we as a staff kind of understand right, what's that look like? You know, because I have to admit, like there are times where Deacon makes a play that is, in my eyes, tough and it's one-handed. Right. You it's know. Guys being able to protect your stick and manage. But if a guy is doing it to, you know, checking a guy instead of picking it up or just doing that, you know, the old ole, that's when I don't think it's tough. I think this saves us from like that one standard where you're, you're handicapped to. You know what a tough, like Dolan no knows what a tough GP is. You know, versus maybe somebody else. Maybe Brown had a few tough GBs as well. Absolutely, and like 
in continuing to reward and promote that. Um, there were more that they had. Are saying um, leaders don't bitch and complain? Yeah, just no, no whining. I think that that goes, I mean, you can, that's probably more of a um, toughness, like the resiliency part, you know? And like, that's why I wanted to mention to the seniors, don't be the guys that we're looking at to see like what your body language is. Like I had my individual meeting with him and I thought it was awesome. I was like, you know, you know what your body, you know, you know you can push yourself. And he knows, he's aware. So I think that that's good. This, uh, and we didn't talk about this on the call yesterday, but you know, I think specifically to when we condition, mm -hmm. whether it's because you lost a drill or because it's just time to do a four stop. Yeah. But you know, the old adage of embrace the suck. Yeah. You know, and that goes with no whining, no complaining. When things are difficult, that's when you're grown. Yeah. So embrace the suck. Yep. And I'm just gonna add too here, just from a certain, uh, certain standard, right? Like um, adding a time to everything. As you said the other day, Coach Silva, right? Like the four, four or a two stop, uh, 17, everything is timed. And I think that goes right back into competition. Burn your right on the DB unit. Yeah. That, uh, that's, that Coach Petro sort of was, I don't know, one of the favorite. Yeah. Well, that goes to standards, right? Like, so again, we value competition, but you lose something and the, and the you know, the losers have to run and then we do a 17 or a two stop or whatever it is we're gonna do mm -hmm. and there's no effort. You know, there's no toughness, there's no grit, there's no resiliency. The guys are just kind of, it's like, ah, I gotta do 17. It may take me three, you know, minutes, but yeah. I'm not gonna put forth any effort. Yeah. That's not. Yep. Boom, everything is time. I well, had to come with a warm stick. I was gonna ask for a little, like, what are we, what's the punishment for these? Like if a guy doesn't run through a tough GB, is that enforced only for him or are we getting the whole team? No, I think that the way to, to improve this group, and again, it goes back to two years ago, is just everybody, right? It's yeah. immediate. Because then it doesn't happen again. Whereas I think if we do it individually, like if I have an individual ground ball station, yeah. and we're doing you know, our four minutes, we do it once, and then everybody also holds each other accountable as well. And I think the less times we'll have to do it, yeah. you know, realistically. I would also say the locker room piece. So like, if you're the first guy out of the locker room to practice, probably bring a bucket with you. Because if you get out there and there's no bucket, you can't do anything. So, and then same thing on the way in, right? If you're the last guy out there, yeah. don't leave a dirty field. Yeah. Make sure everything's cleaned up. I like being able to like say something where it's just like, like in the end of the fall, I felt like I was able to just say, if you're leaving the field, you have something in your hands. If you're not, you're making sure the field's empty. Yeah. You know, like I thought that that was like, and, and that back and forth. You know, they're on the field and off. Yeah, like th this is the stuff that like makes everything on the field work. Like if you can't prioritize this stuff, then oh, no, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. is there we, something to be said about? The way that I look at this is if you never knew, if you were a transfer and you never played one set of any offense or didn't know any defensive slide package or you did these things, you would have a spot in our locker room. Like that's the way, like this is the, the price to, price to admission. You know, and then we'll teach you the lacrosse stuff. But I think that, uh, you know, and I just added a few here um, that we talked about with the seniors yesterday, but like Dixon, I thought it was really cool he said that. No rubbing, like that pisses him off when guys get hit and, and stop the play. Because in a game, that'll, that'll screw us. Uh, Honcho up, Will Berkeley providing the B-52 and Honcho up were huge value adds for him in that meeting yesterday. You know, because if our guys can learn that this is the expectation, you know, then all of a sudden transition becomes easier. And, two-way becomes easier, all the stuff that we want to do, so. I enjoyed the stuff that we continued to talk about early in the fall with this, was they owned it at the end, like the defense was that. Yeah. Like, the, the, like they started to own that in the scrimmage teams that I had on Saturdays. Yeah. And uh, that was something that they organically held each other accountable to. Like if a guy missed a couple weeks and he came back and he did it, like, no, 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 no. Yeah. That was fun for me. Yeah. Was that like some Mike Hammond rule? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> Everything in that area you're talking about, they control. Yeah. That, that's the other part of this. It's, yeah. Those are control. That has nothing to do with talent. This yeah. is all effort and attitude. Mm -hmm. It's not height, weight, speed, stick skills, the ability to shoot, finish, face off, save a ball. It's all effort and attitude. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we'll teach them all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is not. I don't. I don't think I would go much farther than that because then it becomes unmeasurable. You know, um, and the guys 
freaking said it, you know? Like, I don't know if there's anything on there the guys didn't say yesterday when we asked them. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't mention this, which it needs to be, you know, just one of those things. You know, I, Coach Nosky used to always say, like, first day of fall, first day of spring, pretend like they know nothing. It's like, as a group, you know, us writing these things down and making sure that it's just the expectation uh, come January 6th, so. Okay, let's talk Monday goals here. You know, so not talking the plan, but normally Mondays are our riding clearing day. Uh, that's a point of emphasis. That's an area we want to be great at. So I'm going to break that down right away. But what are the other things on a Monday, which we know, you know, in the spring, Mondays are going to be a go day. They're going to be a green light day, right? With Tuesdays being our off day, you know, Sunday's a recovery day. So Monday's relatively fresh. They lift in the morning, so they have all day. What does Monday's practice look like in terms of things we want to accomplish so then we can figure out what we want to do and how we implement it? Go. I got one. Coach P, you got one. I, I love it when we go up and down, but we incorporate some of the odd numbers games so our touch count goes up. You know, if we have, uh, if we do clear, but it ends with three attackmen touching it to the back of the net, even on an empty cage. Just get our touch count high. Yeah. Well, I think regardless, and that might be a two or three drill approach, but you know, um, even just getting our legs up and down. Like this is not a half field day. Wednesday would still be our half field day. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit more emphasis. Sunday, you have some time to review the, the mistakes of whatever Saturday was, whether that was game day or that was a scrimmage. But I would just keep in mind, like you're gonna want something there later on, but you know, whether it's a review of, you know, drag versus dice or a review of, you know, smashing, you know, whatever that may be on the defensive end. You know, so we'll do some sort of one half field component where it gives you 10 to 15 minutes to say, okay, let's, let's catch our breath from the full field stuff. Let's teach it. And then we can go live on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What else? I mean, if it's the first day back, do we want to work in those kind of GV circuits where it's just like kind of thrown into the fire or do we want to kind of shy away from that because we're focusing more on riding clear and full field? I would take away the concept of it being first day back and say more of what a Monday is going to look like. I think the more routine that we get on day one, the more likely we're gonna have a good practice on Monday, February 1st. So, good thought. I would say yes, we do live GBs, but as we did in the fall, is it like a compete live GBs, which I think it probably would be, right, on Monday where we're going live, knowing Tuesday is gonna be an off day. So that might be more of like a scrapping day, um, you know, cone of violence. So I'm just gonna write compete GBs, because I know that'll be a point of emphasis, and we can build that into our full field live stuff if we want to do live with drill, et cetera. Yeah, I would, I would love to reserve time that it's just the basic fundamentals. The, yeah, we, we could give up a goal 10 different ways, but there's one way to pick up a ground ball and make an evasive step and get it to the, you know, the Omaha side. Yeah. Like, so just the stuff that we're gonna do on week one on the first Monday, there should be some similarities of what's gonna be in week 10 yeah. Monday. Mm -hmm. And it's just, the proper way to get the little things done, whether we're tired in the fourth quarter or great in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I would also say too, that's probably gonna be something we build on an everyday basis. We may even add in two. It might be a positional fundies and a team fundies okay. yeah, on, a, on a Monday where we know it's gonna be rusty. You know, it's not gonna look pretty on day one uh, or Monday, which, you know, arguably you could say is day one of every week. Um, knowing Sunday will be a little bit lighter. What else? Um, I would just say conditioning that goes with all that stuff. First day back, just get up and down. Yeah. And the, words of the, <laughs> <laughs> the Monday mile is uh, you can see the looks on guys' faces when it was on the agenda yesterday. What I would argue, not argue, just throw on the, on the table is, you know, how do we make this, this word, and then this synonymous with one another? Is it? I go every day's time again, right? Like, you don't. Know, Going off of last year, you yeah. win the first quarter, you're done. Yeah. I say everybody runs a mile. Yeah. And they have uh, a minimum standard that they have to meet. Yeah. But is, yeah. So is it a mile though? Is it is it a you know I was thinking is it like a four quarter process on Monday? All right, first quarter, it's a you know a four stop. You got to make it in this time, and the whole team does it, and the lights are on. Second quarter, it's a 17, and it's this time. Third quarter, it's a diagonal. So we're getting a little bit more of like jog, sprint, jog, sprint, more like the two mile approach. The issue with the two mile, and I don't have an issue with it because it's just a mental toughness thing. If it rains one day, then the sneakers, and then you, you know, you're going back and forth. And can you just build this into practice where the guys, 
are in it, and then they have to go play when they're tired. Because Monday should be the hardest day of the week, in my opinion. All right, Sunday recover. Monday we get the lactic acid on, we get after it. Tuesday's off. Wednesday, a little bit more live, but also more in the box as they're starting a game plan. Thursday, Friday, getting their legs back for Saturday. So I think Monday is like, I almost have this vision of like a four quarter approach to conditioning versus all right, at the end, you guys are all gonna hang your heads and walk to the track and put your sneakers on. You're gonna run a two stop or a four stop, whatever it is, and then you gotta go do, you know, compete GBs and do it when they're tired. Yeah, I mean, if we're thinking it's gonna be like model of like game like, do we do like a 55 and then later in the practice a 110, you know, and then at later in the practice a 220. Like, do we just build up the increment of the sprint? Like, is that how we want to do it? And we don't have to do just one. We can say, all right, we're going to do, you know, 855s, four 110s, and two 220s. And like, that's just the way that we're just conditioning in the middle of practice. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think you could argue it a million different ways, right? You know, if we were just going to do that and those were going to be the four segments, you know, you just want to be working on things that I guess are applicable across the board. It's like the change of direction versus the endurance versus the, you know, we could do more short and explosive sprints, no doubt. Um, I don't know if we have to have an answer on this yet, but I think as long as we know that these two are gonna be part of the practice, um, as we start to build out our Monday templates, we can have that in there. Is, is there any merit to, you can lo lose a game a certain way, you can win a certain uh, a game a certain way, like losing a game a certain way, is it? Is it worth replaying that situation that was Saturday into Monday? That's and then that is now addressed for the future? Or is kicking a dead horse, kicking a dead horse? No, I, 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 I do believe in like the Monday simulation stuff. You know, <clears throat> especially if you lose, right? Yeah. All right, with 9-7, with 13 minutes left, maybe that's how you end practice. Hey, how can, how can you yeah. win, this, win this next version? Because no matter what, we'll have some sample size of gameplay on that Saturday whether that's us scrimmaging, us playing a game, you know, inner squad, whatever it may be, we're gonna have something. But yeah, I think you know, one thing we learned is just, you put them in the full field, you make them sub, you make them react, you make them call timeouts, you read the shot clock. That's gotta be stuff that we learn in a more fluid motion on Monday. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. What else? You know, just going back to the fall too, things we did on Monday or, you know, that first day is like, what days do we do one-on-ones to make sure we get that part of the competition in? What days do we do scramble situations where it's a little bit more gray, you know, like the 55 stuff, the 44 stuff? What days do we do the uneven? Is this just an uneven day to get up and down but to avoid more physical contact? You know, those are all just conversations we gotta keep in the back of our minds. Because um, this may be a three drill approach, but maybe it's all unsettled, you know, to your point, to get a lot of touches so the ball's in the back of the net, play a transition, you know, and then what elements of the, like, do we want to add elements of the face-off game down here? You know, that'll probably be something we have to work on after a Saturday game. You know, so I think that these all, this isn't what we do. This is just the, the framework for which we decide what to do. So, all right, let's do practice. Is that, are we good here? We are. All right, let me catch this again. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, starting from the beginning, Let's designate time for all the shit that we've been talking about that we want for our standards too. So like, you know, with practice window now being pretty consistent and classes not being in conflict, I think we can almost build in this like, hey, send them the practice plan. And for the first 15, this is, um, sorry, there you go, active stick warm up. You know, and that could be the wall ball session. That could be GBs, right? We're not gonna define that for them, but we're gonna build in so, they look at it as, okay, this is part of practice. 15 minutes, I know this is my window. Is it their time or our time? Their time. That's their 15. Yeah, so th this is just, this is pretty much just taking our time and subtracting by 15 and putting on the practice plan so they know in the beginning stages that's part of the program. For the offensive guys, does that include shooting or would that come in after? No, I think, yeah, I think we save shooting stuff for, to, you know, to what we know, right? Yeah. It's bullshit when they do it on their own. Yeah. All right, so. If we have 15 minutes of active stick warm up, I think that also builds in for the goalies that window of like individual work that we're not getting away from. Um, so I'm just going to add goalie, and do you want that for the face offs too? Yeah. Yeah. Goalie, face off. 
Yeah, just stick there for those guys. Indeed. Skills. This is almost like a mini individual session. It's just every day. You know, it's part of practice. All right, we start practice. I think that we've, uh, we've all agreed that the seniors have, that they prefer to do um, type twos right away. It's kind of their way of saying, okay, practice has started, uh, which is fine with me. So that'll be type twos right into dynamic. And we pretty consistently had that first stick work portion. Um, that, again, this is almost outside of this, saying, okay, what are we doing every day to start practice? You know, we've done some version of, um, you know, I'll put eight to 10 um, stick work. And that could be positional, that could be full field. Doesn't matter. We're not my, favorite, my favorite this fall was when we all got on the same page together with the first thing. And that was almost an extension of that dynamic warm up. And like uh, t doing this, um, the dolphin passing, but making those some of those modifications where there was a ride element to it. Yeah. Uh, the meatloaf drill. You know, if we want to make it a really tough one, and it's like maybe it's the and no, this is a Monday, but the Wednesday coming back is that like open up with the Polish four v threes or something like that. But the high touch volume set the tone for everybody, and then go to the positional point. But we've done it both ways, where it was defense offense and then flip it but there's something to be said for me that like i thought we were getting better in the full field and the end game by doing like the meatloaf or a cornell stick work mm -hmm. um versus just the uh, dolphin passing yeah yeah i really like the cornell one as well and then what we have to do is make sure that whatever we do decide like the best day we did dolphin was when we competed when we had scores on both sides the best day when we did express is when we did the four Everyone at the midfield line, two directions, and we counted goals. I thought that was the best day we had it. Same thing with Cornell, when O and D are going at the same time. So I think that's yeah. where we, like, right away, competition starts in this, this, this phase of practice. Yeah, Express could be um, the half field Express. Like, that could be a team stick work, and yeah. they're competing. Yeah, where I thought we actually got a lot, a lot in on those reps in terms of, um, you know, just actual uh, real life scenario and skeletons, but defense is doing the same shit. Mm -hmm. you know, defense was getting the touches. We can have yes. the goalies get in there. I think we actually had the goalies in with pinkies, so there was actually a realistic shot. I think we were just throwing an empty net, which we know is an issue mm -hmm. for our old guys. Um, and we have the goalies to do it. Okay, cool. Next phase on a Monday. Knowing Mondays are a full field phase, do we want to go right into the individual stuff or should we get going up and down and then catch their breath with the fundy sessions throughout? I've always been a fan of just getting the fundamentals in right after the stick work, just so like you set the foundation for the rest of practice. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just like the OV segment of it, where offense could be doing their skeleton shooting out of the offense, and defense could be a bump and big one drill, something like that. I, I did like how we did that. You know, okay. like more like the O and the D have their kind of staples. Uh huh. You know, like this is box shooting. Etc. Pop, etc. And then the D is more focused on, you know, uh, bump and big one. I, lo I love that keep away right, yeah, that we did. Keep away. Yeah, just again, competition. Yeah. Like how for the shooters do we make box shooting better? The best year we've ever had from a shooting percentage standpoint, we did box shooting every day. So I'm also like hesitant to get away from this too much where I feel like we have. Like we get cute with drills. Yeah fucking hammer shoot and up the hash and scissor and like do the things that we do on game day. Yep. And there's two sides going, so how do we compete? You know, like, is it just goals, right? There has to be like a, yeah. you know, like and a result. If you could, because we have those football pads, like count the amount of times that it hits the football pad. And like, the higher number you have, the worse off. Yeah. Like, I love that. We have, we have the resources where we can have someone down there just counting those reps. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. The defense really gravitated towards one of the other dudes just start breakdown and teaching of the one he wants, getting the trash can involved. Yeah. Like, on the last day of the fall, I asked some of the senior defensive leaders what were the things that they felt made us better and they enjoyed doing with each other. Yeah. And that was one. So right away, I mean, this becomes a session that's got to be 15 minutes then. You know, it's whether it's a, a skill work and a, a positional work, and then it's a, a shooting and an offensive implementation of 
X. Of yeah, whatever our offensive planning is that, that week. Now again, it's cool as you're almost like hidden teaching because we're not doing a lot of in-the-box stuff. Um, and then, I, all right, so then we jump into the, you know, full field number one, right? Which, you know, I look at this and from the experience last year, I think we just do riding clearing. Like if we do eight to 10 minutes of skeleton clearing every Monday, so you know, we know what we're doing. We know what we're doing in the clear. We're running to our patterns. We're still getting touches. It becomes just habitual. Um, I, we can't get away from that, right? So we do skeleton clear. And then one thing we did add in in the past was the dummy O's as bodies. Can we do a better job of having those dummy O's go in and then they immediately become the clearing team? You know what I'm saying? Like the six guys, so everyone's in the same colors. Six guys not in go in and they stand in those six riding spots. And that way they just have somebody to run around. They have somebody to alpha pass. They have somebody to beta curl around or, you know, banana out versus if there's not that standing attack, when our guys will start to go shallow in their cuts. You know, like, I think that that might be just a... So they're practicing what they would do off the turnover? And that's why they're the dummy O's? Okay. No, so they'd be, yeah, well... It was, it was a joke, sorry. <laughs> 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 the ball over. This is what you're doing. This is like you're balls. not wrong. Spread this. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you're not wrong. <laughs> snapshot point. Bad joke. Sorry. It won't, won't be the attacking though. That's the kicker. So it's like out of position, but hey, you're the next six in, and hopefully expedites the next round. Um, okay, boom. Let's go on. So we have in the past just gone right into a build up off of skeleton clear, so we can get some live riding clearing stuff. But um, in the interest of actually getting better at this. I think we would have to add another like riding out, like the attack needs to individually ride. And, and the defense, you know, how do you, how do you add another clearing component without getting away from just skeleton? Or do you just do it live and you just do track or you do hurricane? Yeah, I was gonna say, do you want that to be more of like a, like a fundamental focus of like, hey, D and O split up, like we're gonna teach you guys how to ride yeah. and then come back and do hurricane or do you want to, use Hurricane to teach it. Like, yeah, um, I think we just use Hurricane to teach it. I mean, I think that the defense is, is gonna get overkill, you know, because uh, yeah. that would be skeleton again. So it would be, you know, 10 to 12, I'm gonna put 12, because I know this is the focus. And I'm gonna put Hurricane or Trap. And, and we know that, like, from a coaching standpoint, you know, Hurricane, we can emulate a lot. That's more of like full picture. Trap is more like, what are we practicing in the ride? You know, are we one, two, three? Are we trying to dice? Where are we trying to get that double? Uh, all those things. So um, let's just do a little count here because I don't have my Excel well, sheet. Coach, let me throw this out before you do the count. Yeah. So we talked about Mondays being a heavy conditioning day. Are there spots for us to put three to five minute segments? You know, type twos, boom, we're on the end line. And then 30 minutes of practice, another three to five minutes. 30 minutes of practice, three to five minutes, 30 minutes, and then we finish. So we have four quarters of whatever that's going to be, uh, yep. interspersed throughout the practice. One of the things, too, I love is being able to just pan the ball all the time. Yep. Uh, so, I, you know, again, I don't know what that looks like specifically, but those blocks of time to get after it and run time, compete, etc. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. So you, you do this, right? Maybe you do some fundies and you add in a three to five because you know now that's when they're going to be tired. Q2 condition. I'm gonna be a little bit of a devil's advocate. This is post Saturday. We've addressed some things with the film room on Sunday. We have standards in our locker room of benchmarks and metrics that we wanna hit within game. What if we hit all those? I know conditioning's a part of it, but is there incentive to, you check this box, quarter one of conditioning goes away on Monday. Like, I don't, I don't think our guys are that extrinsically motivated. I think they're pretty intrinsically motivated, but it's, let's say we just played our absolute best. You know, I, I don't think we should make standards different, mm -hmm. but um, are there any type of things that would motivate or incentivize our guys better? To me, I go back to, I mean, it's the dual, we want them to be, conditioned but we also want them to be tough and conditioning is not a punishment so you know to me especially early in the season we should we should i mean monday should be a, a physical nightmare 
And you know, then during the season we can read them. Mm -hmm. uh, and as the season progresses, I think we get progressively in better shape. But especially in January and February, I just feel like we would do ourselves a disservice if we take away some of those conditioning aspects. Okay. You got January, February, I get, I was kind of in the mood of like game day, Saturday. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, shoot, I think the worst thing we could do is these guys do everything that they ask on game day, the one day where the spotlight is, and now it's like, yeah, I don't think conditioning's a negative, but is not doing conditioning a positive. Right. <laughs> I don't know. In the, in the mind of an 18 to 22 year old. Yeah, I think the one thing I would say to that though is like, do you, do you take your foot off the gas pedal when you're 4 0? and you're, you're doing well and all of a sudden that starts to fade. Or it's just like, hey, this is what has gotten us here. I mean, yeah. you think back on that UNC article that we read yesterday. Yeah. At any point in time did they say, there was that one day where he took it really easy on us and let us get off by doing this. Yeah. It was always like, no, regardless of how good you are, like, this is what we do. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I just reading that yesterday kind of was like, yeah, I kind of agree with that yeah. line of thinking. And I, I agree with you, Nick. And, and we, took, we said it earlier, and I had a comment on that. And I know we're saying that in competition, competitions, part of losing is going to be getting on the end line, maybe doing some running. But again, if, if our goal is conditioned, then conditioning is not a punishment. You know what I mean? Like that, and to me, that's a mental thing. It's like, oh, shit, we got to run now. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not. It's like, hey, man, we get to run now. And I know that's a lot to expect from a college athlete or any athlete. Yeah. Nobody wants to do sprints, but this is like, hey, this is part of who we are, mm -hmm. you know, so. No, uh, I, especially as a January practice, I think it's a no-brainer. I think you still have competitions that have different, you know, we want to compete in this. We're definitely going to compete in this. There's different consequences for winning and losing, but Monday is just part of our identity is we're going to be in great shape. And Monday is a day that we can actually do that without hurting the rest of the week. Um, so I love this. Okay. So let's just do a quick time count. We're at like an hour and a half. An hour and a half? Yeah. So. Yeah, hour and a half left if you got to go for the load. Yeah. So 30 minutes left. So we have that. <laughs> we don't have much here. We have that. Yeah, we haven't done ground balls, which I think you can put in between shit in January. I think that could be a two session. You know, like a, like a, it's the, the stations. I love station ground balls. Yeah. Um, like that's the, in the, AM part of practice, the first hour, then the PM part of practice is the competition ground ball drills of a cone, cone of violence, or uh, yeah. any of those. Yeah, I mean, you can know, go to symbols right here, right? I mean, right before fundies. There, there you go. You know, um, you know I'm putting yeah. 8 to 10. And this is station GB, so this is where we're a little bit more focused on the fundamental of how we're picking it up and the, the compete and the teach. Some of them will be skeleton, some of them will be compete. And then later on in the practice, you know, maybe we go right there. We, yeah, you go, you know, Q3, right? So Q3 right after Hurricane, which is a good one, right? And, uh, and then H2O. So you got um, five, three to five, and then two. And now right over here, you're going, let's just for lack of a better concept right now, let's go uh, Cone of Violence, Box of Violence now. Cone of Violence. And that's a compete. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're at 10. So now we got our GBs in in two facets. We're just going back over here quick. Now we got to play a little bit up and down. That's we got conditioning. You get rid of conditioning. Well, we only got three quarters. Well, I'm just saying, but we're touching Yeah, I just want to hit my fourth conditioning here. Um, I like to get up and down at this point. So this is going to be a, a 10 to 12. And this would be FFFBs. This could be li uh, libel if we're doing GBs. Uh, it could be. Uh, rats for 55? Well, that's not a full field, but we could definitely get rats in. Maybe rats or, or Polish 4 v 3 is kind of how we end practice. I know the guys love rats, um, so we could save that one. So let's just go boom, full field. And then the way that I would look at this practice as a player is I would like to do my teaching and then finish playing. So that might be scrimmage, rats, whatever. So this would give us a chance to catch our breath a little bit after a full field and say we do, um, you know, let's say 10 to 15 and this would be half field. The problem with that now is going back to the original conversation of how we want to practice. So do you half field O, all eyes, half field D, 
all eyes, because now that changes the dynamic. Or half field, oh, yeah, you have to. The way that we're doing it, you would have to do 10 and 10, you know, and you'd have to split it up. So it had to And this is addressing the goal of simulation? No, this would be addressing whatever you wanted to go over. Like if we watch a Saturday scrimmage and you said, man, we are not, whatever, drifting and turning the corner, you know, boom. The half field load would be a review of those things within our offense. Yeah, it, so half field, this is like on air stuff, or is this a drill that's like we're doing with the defense? I, I think that that's kind of up for interpretation. The way that I would look at it, more so from a Monday practice, like, I remember one practice, Coach Janowski, that someone didn't pick up a ground ball and roll away. So every defenseman had to pick up a ground ball and roll away. You know, it's just like Monday is going to be the fixture of the mistakes on Saturday. Mm -hmm. The way that I would look at this is, we have the whole group, we go over the concept, and then we drill it on two sides. Mm -hmm. So that way there's a ton of touches, there's a ton of reps, but it's happening on both sides. We do rat stroke, and then we do the defense. And it might be, you know, bullshit approaches. We go over the approach, we go over our expectations, we split it up, and then we do live reps there. Mm -hmm. That would be like the way that I was so like, damn, I just threw that red marker. So it'd be rats, half D, simulation. And I'll say, you only need eight for this, 10 to 15 for this, and then end with that. Make sense? Yeah. yeah, I agree with this because of, especially with our roster size this year. Yeah. yeah. Just can't, can't make up for a um, you know, loss. Now you do have to build in a, a Q4 here, you know, and you can just do Q4 before, um, <laughs> right here, Q4 conditioning, and then H20 break. Three, two, and you get all your conditioning in. So you get your conditioning, all four quarters, you got your half field, and you got your simulation at the end. I would say that's probably what, two hour, 15 minute practice? Yes. That's a Monday practice. You know, I mean, I don't know if that's overdoing it. Now we have to add some water through, um, but I think from a, you know, we're getting two sessions of riding and clearing. <clears throat> Full field, we can also introduce the riding clear. We're getting skeleton clearing. We're getting two sessions of GBs. We're getting two sessions of stick work and fundies. Um, and then we're obviously playing twice in more of a gray scenario. And we're getting one short segment of O and D review. All right, we'll, we'll, so goalies and, and face off individual work, we'll talk about with uh, Pat and, and Nick, but I want those to be consistent. So Nikki, what are the two or three things you want to do with the face off guys every time? Uh, stick work. Um, so I think just first day partner passing. Okay, what else? Face off uh face off specific just recognizing our exits so just working on our different type of exits um and then lastly just gbs so those would be like the three staples for that yeah so every day we got ladder ball toss our warm-up and then we're gonna add in uh outlets to our like warm-up stations that we do okay. yeah more time boom and then for announcements obviously that's something that we can at attack uh, when we get closer to that time of year uh, because obviously there will be a lot of things that change but there are two drills on here that we just you know for clarity of purpose for for all the coaches to make sure we know what we're doing coach pete you want to go over uh cone of violence as well as keep away keep away clear yeah perfect so with our fundamental position work do i have the goalies today on, uh, on this monday okay. yeah so the nice part is we can get the goalies done by the time you guys are out there okay so the goalies by team stick work will be good perfect to yeah. so keep away clearing pat when they come to me we're going to split them up in their green and white teams i got black and uh, blue today but keep away clearing goal facing upfield because that's how i grew up and how i was raised we're going to put a restraining box in here that is not symmetrical my Lynchburg education, okay? And then uh, we're gonna have a goalie, D, 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 D. So it's five on the clearing team. We're gonna put in just four guys in white. They're all long poles and rope for us, okay? Goalie's gonna start with a ball. He's gonna say, I'm just gonna blow the whistle. They got 30 minutes to play keep away. 
and uh, we're trying to get our goalies here to you know kind of draw, kick it one, force the riding team to get going, utilizing our numbers, making the all the defensive guys have to spin and work, but mainly getting the uh, clearing team, which I would call the offense, our goalie and four poles or rope out there, comfortable with a guy approaching it, getting his hands away, seeing the overpass. And more importantly, what I felt in the uh, second half of our fall is the guy adjacent to the ball without the ball communicating. You know, if the goalie's getting shutting off here, just say, hey, throw the over, over, I'm covered, I'm covered. And then also our younger guys understanding the calls of looking the Boston side or looking the Omaha side. But I'll have the goalies five versus four keep away. And we use parameters of a, using the restraining box as kind of a gray area. The first time we did it, as soon as a guy touched the, uh, the restraining box, it was, oh, he's out of bounds. I'm like, guys, oh, it's just, it's a foot, footwork, stick work, fundamental drill. Don't worry so much about the lines. So keep away clearing. Let me get a orange. No, I just need an eraser. So. Coach, are you telling the riders to, they always have to play the ball? Oh, well, starting like this, almost like a man down zonal principles. And I want the ball carrier to trigger the defense to have to move. You know, that's, that's heady, that's athletic, that's, like if, if you're uncovered, you're uncovered. Yeah. You know, so let's get, at, let's get Adam Baker, let's get Christian, let's get those guys to draw, get them spinning, and now clean sticks should humiliate that defense yeah. and have them running around crazy. Coach, just a reminder, I used to call this the Josh Allen drill because um, as the, the best rushing scramble quarterback in the AFC now with Lamar out, um, you know, that is where you find the, the sound footwork and athleticism you that? in Buffalo. Yeah, I think you're just calling it that this year. It's a little different. See the smile putting the mask on. Right <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, don't, we're going to be the best Wednesday night football team ever. Um, and then what are we doing now, Cone of Violence? Yeah, I think Cone of Violence. Yeah, so the difference that we, I thought and we talked, I loved our discussions in the fall, Cone of Violence, um, I'll draw up that. We, we put the guys, I'll go reverse with the goal now. We put them in a cone here. And we had three versus three in a really tight area, a really tight contested ground ball area where coach had a ball. We had all of the blue on one side, all of the um, black on the other side or green and white. And it was a designated mandatory two on one on the ground ball. So let's say black has to get it Two blue had to double the ball. Okay. Um, and then the other two black um, teammates, they had to get into the mirror to provide outlets, you know, and, and play it out for a quick dunk. We found that that was great for a toughness, hunker down, chest over the ball drill. But a lot of the great opportunities to get transition is getting that ground ball in the space and having those mirrors use the space adjacent to the ball. So we took the cone of violence and we made it a box of violence with the restraining box, where we now had a 4v4. And this is a little bit of a modification of a, a drill that I stole from Rob Randall at Nazareth called the Heidi Ho drill. But same thing, coach is gonna have a ball here. We'll have green on one side, um, white on the other. We come in, it's still a designated ground ball, uh, uh, designated and prescribed double team, but now, we have more space to use some of those evasive steps out of the ground ball techniques that we're doing in those first fundamental ground ball drills and stations. He's got more space to operate. And now there's three mirrors, okay? And now the defense is now playing more of a 3D2 off of uh, the spike it, which is what we call moving it off the ground. So uh, box of violence versus cone, 4v4, but with a prescribed um, 2v1 ground ball, working on the mirrors, moving it twice, and trying to find a dunk. And uh, you get the toughness element, you get the mirroring element, you get the spike it element, and then you get that, I guess the first element of that, how are you gonna get out of this 2v1 ground ball? You know, what evasive steps are you gonna use? Um, are you just gonna keep running to your strong hand, or are you gonna resist going to, uh, going to your weak hand, but just finding the ability to run the space? Any questions on that? Coach, you nailed the man. Yeah, well. Fantastic stuff. Delivery, Tan, you're like the, the Vanna White. Of, uh, Vanna White, I've been called a lot worse. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm out, I'm leaving today. <laughs>
Thanks for joining us for our first practice plan. You can see it gets pretty intense. Uh, there's a lot to discuss. I think that there's uh, ultimately one of our core values as a coaching staff is to, to be on the same bus together. And that's why we spend a lot of time in here, a lot of hours, a lot of, a lot of time arguing and, and figuring it out. So when we get out there, all of us are on the same page and we can get after it that first Monday when, when practice rolls around the spring.